Presiding officer, as the Minister said in opening, planning is not just about place but also about people. The final National Planning Framework 4 makes it clear that Scotland won't compromise on the climate crisis and empowering communities. And whilst the document and indeed this debate might not get much public attention, in terms of how we live, work and play, MPF 4 is really important. It's a plan for the type of Scotland we want to live in. Welcome proposals in MPF 4 include enabling more renewable energy generation to support the transition away from reliance on fossil fuels, while protecting national parks and national scenic areas, and supporting emerging low-carbon technologies like hydrogen and carbon capture, and developments that unlock the transformative potential of offshore renewable energy. As the Cabinet Secretary laid out in his statement yesterday, the opportunity this provides to grow Scotland's highly skilled energy workforce, increase jobs and energy generation in the supply chain, whilst enabling communities and businesses to prosper, is vast and welcome. Over and above protecting national parks and national scenic areas, which are of course really important, I would be keen to see brownfield sites used for such projects and would welcome, as I believe would the majority of my Ayrshire constituents, the use of previously developed land not in use rather than new developments on land currently used for farming or leisure, wherever that is possible. I have previously raised in chamber my constituents in Lylestone who told me that they feel they are on a David and Goliath scale fight with a company proposing to build a large solar farm on farmland next to their village. They expressed worry and anger about the fact the company concerned was acting as though the project was a foregone conclusion. I sought and received reassurance from the Scottish Government that that is absolutely not the case and that the concerns and objections of residents of the village who would be most impacted by the proposed development would be taken seriously. Impact assessment and mitigation remain vital to community wellbeing. And I note that MPF4 policies do not give a blank cheque to developers to build on wild land. Community consent to large-scale renewable projects is important, mm. and I think that there is more work to do in this regard, particularly around so-called community benefit. A few thousand pounds for a community council to distribute does not cut it anymore, I do not think. Citizens should benefit from clean, green energy being produced. MPF 4 facilitates active travel infrastructure, low carbon transport and more green spaces. Good news for the nation's health and well-being. I will give way. Minister. It was just picking up on that last point. I wonder if Ruth McGuire would welcome the introduction of a dedicated policy in community wealth building. She will be very familiar from her own part of the world with tremendous work that is underway in community wealth building. And does she agree with me that is some a mechanism by which we can harness many of the economic benefits to come from increasing our onshore renewables? Ruth McGuire. Absolutely. There is huge potential in that, and I do, I do welcome it. Um, MPF4 facilitates active travel infrastructure, low carbon transport and more green spaces. Good news for the nation's health and well-being. We know that opportunities to be outdoors and active not only have a restorative impact on those with existing physical and mental health issues, but can actually prevent ill health in the first place. I would want to note that in developing active travel infrastructure, it is cru crucial to consider all users who will be walking, wheeling or cycling. The news this morning highlighted a shared space not far from us on here in Leith Walk in the capital that does not seem to do that. And I think that underlines the importance of meaningful consultation and dialogue and consideration of all citizens in developing our public spaces. MPF 4 adopts a planned and evidence-based approach to delivering good quality and affordable homes that benefit communities. And good quality, affordable homes, as well as being good for health, support valuable local jobs. They are an excellent example of the well-being economy that we want to create. I note what colleagues have said about the, the targets within there, and I would just want to acknowledge the M stands for minimum. Evidence-based minimum requirements set an achievable starting point. I think local development plans can be more ambitious, and it is locally that the knowledge will sit about the scale and mix of housing that is required in our communities. A fairer and greener planning system can tackle long-standing challenges and inequalities to the benefit of all our communities in Scotland, to the benefit of the environment, to the benefit of our economy. Better places will be an important part of the response to the strategic priorities of net zero, addressing child poverty and growing a well-being economy that benefits all our citizens. 
Planning, of course, can also play a critical role in delivering the national strategy for economic transformation and, again, that community wealth building that the Minister mentioned. At MPF's core lie measures that will reduce carbon emissions, tackle climate change and restore nature, while providing our communities here in Scotland with sustainable, livable and productive places. It is time to get MPF4 in place and begin implementation at pace to the benefit of Scotland's communities, environment and economy. Presiding officer. Thank you.